What's up, Professor Wargalese? We are on lecture number three. We're moving on to CSS box model and floats. Now, we're first going to start out with some slides to learn some concepts, and then we'll look at the code. So let's first open up the slides. You can download this PDF, or you can click on the magnifying glass, which will view the PDF from the browser. I usually like to download the PDF so I can write notes on it, because while I'm talking, you'll usually hear me say what's going to be on the exam. Now, let's open up these slides and let's go over the concepts. We're in the CSS box model and floats lecture. First, it's important to note that every HTML element has a default display value, depending on what type of element it is, depending on what browser you're using. And usually that default display value for most elements is either block or inline. Now, in the previous videos, I probably mentioned block and inline and maybe we didn't really talk about it. Well, now we're really gonna go over what are block and inline elements. Now, a block level element has a few characteristics and you're gonna to wanna to memorize these characteristics, one for the exam, but also for future development. That way you can really display the elements on your page correctly. Now, a block element always starts on and ends with a new line. It's gonna take up the full width available. So what does that mean? Now, you'll see this div element here, and let's just imagine that white block is the viewport of the browser, basically their web page. You'll see here, there's nothing on the same line. I have a div, which is, happens to be a block element. There's nothing in front of the div, there's nothing behind the div. It takes up the full line, and it takes up the full width available. Now, it's important that the width available is the parent container. Now, I have the body, which is the viewport. If I have the body tag and then a div right inside the body, the parent element is gonna be the whole viewport. But let's say inside the body I have a div. The div is half of the page. And inside that div, I have another div. The inside div will take up as much space as the parent div, which would be 50% of the container. We'll look at an example here soon to explain that a little bit better. But they stretch out to the left and right as far as possible. Some examples of block elements are divs, headers, one through six, paragraph tags, form elements, and we can see this block element down below. So things to remember are a block element always starts on and ends with a new line, and it takes up the full width available, which is 100% of the parent container. Now let's look at inline elements. Inline elements are the exact opposite. They do not start on a new line. They actually are displayed next to each other. So let's say I have a span element here, and you'll see this is a span element inside of a paragraph tag. You'll see the span element is actually next to this text, whereas the div here, there was nothing in front of this div. The div is the green box. The white box is the browser's viewport. The green box is the div. Here, the green box is my inline element. You'll see it's actually next to something. So it only takes up as much width as necessary based off of the content of the element. Some examples of inline elements are span, code, button tags, links, images. You'll want to know some of these examples for the exam. So if I have a span, you'll see it is next to something. It only takes up as much width as it needs. An image tag does the same. I believe an image is actually used on the exam, so you'll wanna know that an image is an inline element. But the two things to remember here are they do not start at a new line, they are displayed next to one another, and they take up only as much width as necessary. We'll continue to the coding example, and I'll show you this in the code so you can see it visually. We'll open up brackets and we'll look at number one, block versus inline. We'll see in the next video.